Okay, so let's talk a bit about working with content, creating or placing content in InDesign. At its core, InDesign does a very simple thing. It just takes content made in other applications, so uh, illustrations made in Illustrator, for example, or Corel Draw, uh, photos straight out, the, straight out of the camera or maybe edited in Photoshop, uh, text written in whatever text editor of your choice, like Microsoft Word or Google Docs or whatever, and it just takes that content and it helps you place it on a page. Because, for example, if you've ever ever tried to arrange something on a page in Word, it's not very easy to put something exactly where you want it and make it have exactly the properties you want it. So, InDesign does, does just that. You place the content, you move it around, and you set properties for it, size, uh, color, uh, I don't know, outlines and stuff like that. It's very simple. Um, and the advantage it has in the face of Photoshop and Illustrator, for example, that is that it is very good at working with all kinds of content, especially with large pieces of text and with very large and repetitive documents uh, where you have hundreds of pages, for example, and where you have the same settings repeating all over again. So you have the same kind of style for text on page one and page 30 and page 160, and you don't want to do that manually every time. That's its core advantage, let's say, and its features for preparing documents for print specifically. Now, content in InDesign always comes in boxes. Uh, so, theoretically, you have three kinds of boxes. You have text boxes, image boxes, and empty boxes that can be used as graphics. But the distinction doesn't really matter very much. So, if we look at the toolbar here, you might have it on one row. If you click on this double arrow, you can switch from one to two rows. Uh, so, if you look at the tools here, you have three tools that help you make boxes. You have the type tool, which helps you make text boxes. The frame tool, if you right click it, you get rectangle, ellipse and polygon frames. We're just gonna work with rectangles. That helps you make image boxes, let's say, rather empty boxes. And the rectangle, ellipse and polygon tool, the shape tools, that let you draw shapes boxes that are there just as um, graphical elements. So I can make a text box, just click and drag on the page, and you'll see it comes in with a blinking cursor there, and I can start typing, for example. I can make a frame by just clicking and dragging, and I just have an X through it showing me that it's empty right now, but that it's there, and I can make a rectangle, and it's again just a rectangle with no content or anything at this point. Now, for all of these, I can, I can apply colors to them, for example, uh, all the same, and if I click a rectangle, with a type tool, I'm going to be able to start typing inside of it. If I click a frame, I'll be able to start typing inside of it as well. So uh, if a frame is empty, you can actually put any kind of content inside of it, even if it is a text frame. So I'm going to double click this to get back to the text and delete this. And just to quickly show you, I'm going to go into the links folder here and drop this image on top of this box and you see it, it the color because i changed the color it looks a bit bit weird but i could drop the image inside the box even if it was a text box and the same for 
all of these. Um, so you can create anti empty boxes and put content in them either by clicking with the type tool to make them text boxes or by dragging images inside them or you can just drop images, click and drag to drop a file in InDesign and you'll see it loads next to your cursor and now you can either click to place it at its original size and I'm gonna hit Control Z, Command Z on the Mac or you can go to the edit menu and is the first option here uh, to go back to when it was loaded in my cursor and I can click and drag to also decide what size it is. Now this is a poor quality image so it's not a good idea to make it bigger. I could have also made it smaller. So click and drag and then either just click or click and drag to resize it as you place it and it automatically comes in with its own box. You can see these points on the edge of the box that show you it's there. And the same works for text. You can just copy and paste some text in InDesign and it comes in automatically with its box. Um, another way in which you can place content and it comes useful some of the time is to go to file the menu here and place or use the keyboard shortcut control D which is actually very useful and then you can browse for a file and this kind of does the same thing but if you already have a box selected it replaces the content of that box. If I didn't, if I'm just going to click with the black arrow tool here on an empty space, it just does the same thing. It loads up the image so I can place it wherever I want. But if I do have something selected, I'm going to hit Control D and I'll choose this image and it replaces what's in the box. Um, Another important thing to be aware of is these two tools here. Uh, the first one, the selection tool or the black arrow tool, is the tool that you use for working with the boxes. So you can click and drag a box, you can click on it to select it, you can click off of it to deselect it, you can tell it's selected by these little squares in the corners and the middles of the sides. Uh, and you can click the edges and drag to resize or click on the outside of the corners when the, the arrow turns to a double rounded arrow to rotate. And you can see the box is independent from the content. And then you can use the white arrow tool, the direct selection tool, work with the content. So you see now I clicked on this and it selected the image. I can see the frame here, this brown frame around the image and I can move it around in the box. It won't show if it's outside the box. I can move it around and resize it independently. This is very important for working with InDesign to be aware that the box and the content, and this goes for text as well, uh, are separate. Most of the time you will have the box and the, the image the same size but sometimes you need to work with them separately and you can use this for example to quickly crop an image to cut out something you don't want if for example you want something like this but the image is still there. Another way in which you can get to the content of a box is to double click it. See I double click this and now I can see the selection around the image even if the, the, all, all the image is not visible. I can do the same thing with a text box. I just double click it and now the text is active. I'm in, uh, in the box and I can hit escape on the keyboard to go back to the box. And for images in particular, 
when you hover above them you'll see the circle in the middle this can both help you and hinder you this is also for selecting the contents of the box so when i click this i can move the image around i can click and drag to move the image around or i can just click to select the content uh, this is very useful but often you might be clicking it by mistake when you're just trying to move the box so be careful about this as well uh, so that's basically how how you uh, deal with content in general in InDesign like I said these are the two types of content you will generally be handling graphics and text and that's kind of it.